This video is brought to you by Straight Goods News, Canada's alternative online news source. Visit straightgoods.ca. Uh, I'm also the vice chair on the Senate Standing Committee of Fisheries and Oceans, and I can't underline how important it is that we look at this issue today. And if there is one issue that I think is going to demise the fishing communities, not only in Prince Edward Island, but certainly in the Atlantic region, is going to be this here. Uh, we're going to lose our, um, our, our fleet uh, separation and we're going to uh, the owner-operator policy, which has served our community so well for 30 years. I'd like to speak to you just a little bit about how important family life is to Prince Edward Island still. And uh, each community around the island, and we have many of them from one uh, tip to the other tip, uh, that depend on the fishing industry. And with the many challenges that are facing small town communities and families who choose to make their living and raise their families in the Atlantic regions, wisely I might say, this is going to have such a devastating impact on our fisheries. I look back many, many years and I can look at the, the farming communities on Prince Edward Island. And as successful as our farming industry is, it, it did succeed in a way at, at the demise of many of our small farms. Uh, I wouldn't like to see that happen to our fishing community. We have not only challenges with our fisheries, uh, apart from uh, maybe uh, losing the sole control of. But it's, it's, uh, it's to me just such a non-fair move. It's such a not considering the human impact and the, uh, the impact that it will have on those small mom and dad operations. And I must say many women are in the fisheries, both in the processing plants and on the water. And it's, uh, it's that kind of an industry, and I think government should be a little bit more aware and a little bit uh, more kind in their, in their policy-making uh, endeavors, that the families and the lives of Atlantic Canada have to be put uh, in the front. To me, Thank this you. is certainly, in my writing, a Bonavista Gander, Grand Falls, Windsor, I have 195 communities. Um, Mark touched on the consultations, but it, it, beyond that, there's also been the independence of the individual fish harvester. So we have a couple things at play here. Uh, if you have the ability of larger companies and processors, we or larger merchants, as we like to call them back in the old days, if they have more control over the fishery, they are able to take these individual fishing licenses and they are able to what we call stack them or own more of them. What that enables them to do is that with the larger vessels, they are able to process crab or shrimp and also uh, species such as turbot. They're able to process that at sea which basically means that the majority of fish plants will close, definitely. There is no doubt about it, that's exactly what is going to happen. Of 195 towns in my riding, I would say approximately at least 30 or 40 that I can think of will disappear. They're gone. If this policy is erased, consultations, as Mark pointed out, very minimum. We have a small, small window to get these consultations in and to uh, allow all stakeholders. But what the Conservatives are doing is that they say that they're basing this on web-based consultations, a lack of face-to-face -face consultations. Of 195 communities in my riding, close to 40 of them do not have access to high-speed internet, don't have access to the internet whatsoever. Nobody talks about that aspect of it. So what this is, is similar to what they did with the Fisheries Act, is to shut down dissension and basically ran this policy through for ideological reasons. Unfortunately, that's what we've got. And this is going to decimate many of the small communities and also eliminate the independence of the individual fish harvester. A 30-year-old policy that the Liberal Party brought in many years ago and has served this country well, certainly has served the east coast of this country well.